Thank you so much, sir. Over to you. Check. Hi, uh, I'm Kumaran. It's overwhelming to see so many people. And I think this is the first time I'm actually talking to uh, somebody from a completely different domain. I've talked to people in technology for quite a bit. I've been in technology for close to 20 years and had I was working with Microsoft before here. Some of the things which I'm going to share is uh, also my experience where I have worked with Microsoft. I was blessed enough to work with 100 customers in 10 years. And at that time, every day, I, Microsoft used to charge close to $1,000, which is around 60,000 rupees per day. Now, how much can I work to deliver a value of 60,000 rupees? Okay, so there's something else that I had to do beyond technology or beyond what I'm directly going to give to them to give that satisfaction and the value. So that's something which I wanted to share over here. Now, it's... Okay, so basically, what I just wanted to do quickly was, how do you actually make the consumer behavior change, which is something that you would need as a person? So I'll quickly go around what happens today what I mean by possibilities, I said it's about changing behavior by creating possibilities. What do I mean by possibility? How do you discover what are the different possibilities that is there? And then moving ahead, and what's going to be the business model by changing this behavior? Now, it's kind of uh, interesting. What happens today? We just want to do make sure that the investor is spending and not uh, generally trading. What do we do? We try to sell, sell, and more sell. Is that what is actually needed? Now, one of the things which I want to talk about is how do you change from this, or what is that you need to do slightly differently to change the consumer behavior? In short, I would say, don't sell. So what does that mean? So that means that we have to understand what creating possibilities mean. Okay. So one of the things about creating possibility, let me start with a small story. You see the bunch of monks there, right? So there was this. Dad was running a comb business, and he was about to die. He had three sons, and he wanted to help them figure out who's going to lead the business after he dies. So he sends them to a monastery which is close by and send combs to the monk. How many of you want to take up this job? You can see all of them don't have hair. A bit of a tough challenge. So he sends them off. After a couple of months, the sons come back, and then he asks them, OK, what is that you have made? So the first son says, I, can, I have made a deal to set 50 combs per month. The second one comes and says 100 combs per month. And then the third one comes and says, I have finished a deal of making 5,000 combs per month. Obviously, who gets the ownership, you know it. But what's the secret behind it? What the son did was he did not go and sell. He went and sat in the monastery every single day for one and a half months. He was just watching people there. He did not sell. He did not try to sell to the monks. And all he said at the end of the period, he went to the head of the monk. He said, a lot of uh, devotees come to your place. When they come, it's a long journey. Their head is all ruffled up. What you can do is as a part of the offering, they give so many offerings. As an addition to that, can you offer a comb to them when you give it back? And on that comb, we will have phrases of your blessing with them. So people come to the monastery to build faith. And I, as a comb manufacturer, will help you take that faith back with them to their house. And every day when they pick up the comb, they actually have the experience of being in the monastery. That's how he did that deal. That's interesting. Now, let's take something else more practical and more real. Zenefits is a company which is a startup. It's been quite successful in the Bay Area. What do they do? They are a payroll startup, which means they process salaries and uh, things like that. Okay, So what is that they were doing differently? They develop software to manage payrolls and benefits. And they do it for free. So how does a company which is developing software to manage payments and benefits is actually doing it for free? So where do they make their money from? They actually make it from a byproduct of selling insurance. So when they process payrolls, it's natural, right? All of you know it. Part of payroll, how do you save money? You have to make investments. So a tip here, try to develop HR software. 
okay? So that's what you need to do, not sell insurance products or mutual fund products anymore. Now, they have done it very beautifully. Now, everybody needs payroll processing, they give it free of cost. And then they say, oh, by the way, we will help you buy insurance. So the companies today, employees run all around, taking proofs, March is a headache for all the finance guys. Here, it's automatically taken care of. So that's what they said. Now, this is what I mean by possibilities, creating possibilities, possibilities which don't exist. Now, I need your help here, okay? Uh, I'll ask you to do something. It's very simple, but uh, if you do it, I will explain why I asked you to do it at the end, okay? A very simple question. How many of you would want to increase your customers? Raise of hands, please. Excellent. The ones who haven't raised their hands, I guess either they are already making a lot of money, request a customer from them, okay? The, uh, <laughs> okay. So the other part is actually, it's actually an experiment which we would actually do. How do you discover possibilities? It's great, somebody did it, you can copy it. So we'll do a small experiment here, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I just want you to follow it as precisely as possible, okay? Now, I'm gonna give you 15 seconds, okay? When I say start, all of you should close your ears to get this benefit, get, close your eyes, sorry, to get this benefit. I'm gonna give you a color, and within your closed eyes, you're supposed to figure out how many colors can you recall from around yourself, from the place which you're sitting with your eyes closed, okay? Start, close your eyes. Try to recall how many purple colored objects can you actually count. You have 15 seconds. I will count so that it's easier for you. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, with your eyes closed, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Now, open your eyes and see how many purple color objects. I haven't sat in any of your places. When you open your eyes, you would see much more purple colors than you said. To begin with, there are a bunch of purple colors right on my slide, okay? More than enough of them, okay? When I was walking in just here, I just turned right and asked one of the security guards, where's the toilet, okay? He says it's right there. I turn around, I see a big board with toilet on there. Why? My mind was occupied with something else. So when you are obsessed or when you're fixated on certain things, it's very difficult to pick up a color which is not there. Another kind of thing how to, dis how to discover is using curiosity. Now this is a very simple exercise. I would ask somebody who's on the left of your side, to your left, okay, just turn around who's on the left hand, the closest to you. Sorry? Okay. <laughs> So just look around, okay? Look at someone who is sitting on the left-hand side. Just turn around and look who's on the left of your side, okay? So the person who is closest to you, okay? Now, uh, if it's, what I want you to do is talk to that person who is closest to you, okay? So if it's across, then probably you can look at the one who's at the right, okay? So I'll give one minute, okay, for A, the first person, and one minute for the other person, B, and I'm gonna give one minute for both of you to think. It's a very simple question, okay? I want you to think of something that you always wanted to do in life, but you couldn't get around to doing it, okay? Either the time's passed or you never could get it. So I have, I'll give you one minute to do that. Think of something which you always wanted to do, but couldn't do. It's kind of, this This what I like about talks, I make people, audience do the work, and I can relax. Well, there are some tips I will try to set at the end of it which would make sense to you as well. Okay, now, the real exercise starts. You, the first person, turn around and tell what you had thought of to the person next. You have one minute to do that. Tell what is that you thought, but 
you wanted to do, but you couldn't. Share it with the person who's there next to you. Go ahead. One minute. Okay, now switch, the, now it's your turn to share your unfilled wish to the person on the other side. Go, one more minute. Okay, five seconds, just wrap it up. Okay. Thanks. I can see a lot of smiles there. You know what just happened? What you have to do is something called asking a curiosity question. Out of curiosity, you ask something to somebody there. Now, that person is not the same to you anymore. Now, let's say you have to sell something to him. Let's say you are God now. You had to grant him a wish. You know what to grant him. Correct? You didn't know that three minutes before. Some random person, you know what wish to grant him, which will make him really happy. That's who you all are, making wishes come true, making dreams come true. That's your responsibility, helping people do that. Now, to discover that is a very simple tool called CQA, Curiosity Question Asked. Now that you have understood what the possibilities are, do a CQA. Do not sell. Go, when you meet your customer, when you meet your friends, when you meet your children, anybody, ask a curiosity question, why, what? An example, when my son comes from school, I do not ask him what was the portion today. I ask him, how do you feel about school today? What did you enjoy about school? What you didn't enjoy about school? So when you meet customers, you kind of ask them, what is your aspirations for yourself? What is that you wanted for your children? So you ask these questions, a lot of them, not, oh, by the way, that's your wish? Okay, quick, here are the products, map it. No. Have a very detailed conversation with them. That creates possibilities for you. With those possibilities, you will be able to create a vision for them. And you know who's going to do the benefits part? You or the customer? Customer will be looking at filtering out, this is the benefits that I'm going to get by getting this vision manifested. That's how you're going to move it ahead. So now that you've understood possibilities, it is about something which is not very obvious. And you do that by telling yourself, I am not going to sell. I'm here to create possibilities. And crystallizing that possibility is creating a vision, much more concrete. Oh, by, for example, it could be that a customer comes and says, uh, I always wanted to be a great sportsman. I couldn't. Now you actually have a conversation with them telling, Okay, so why don't you send your son for coaching? And he says, no, it's too much of money. Then you kind of say, I'm taking an example here. This is your area of expertise. But I would say, why don't you start a SIP for the next five years, and that fund will help him go to that coaching academy. Now, that's more concrete to him rather than telling, at retirement, you're going to do. That's too far for them to imagine. But this one is something very closer. It could be a vacation. It could be that... Uh, TV or sari or toy which he wanted to buy for somebody in his family that he liked. So that is about creating a vision which is very clear in his mind and he knows now he will ask you the question, what is it that I need to do to do that? You don't have to sell. He will say, please sell. Okay, so that's one thing which I learned in my company is that the ability for a person who's giving service to help the person on the other side fulfill their dreams and visions. So, moving to the last part, 
What's the business model? Any guess? It's actually pretty simple. Okay? If you sell something, you make a customer today. But if you help someone fulfill their dream, envision what is there, then you make a customer for life. There's no more selling to them. Okay? So that's it. Thanks. I'm giving back four minutes because the organizers are running short of time. And uh, also, the, the other things which I wanted to share with you is a uh, couple of things is, one of the things which I ask is, when you ask for a person who's talking, the best thing is the audience actually doing half of my work for me. Okay? And you've been lovely audience engaging and doing this. Thanks. So let your customers do the work for you, and you be there supporting them from the back end. Thanks. <laughs>